are going to hell. That's what my father told me when I was four years old. You're a faggot. Is what my peers told me when I was 14 years old. You don't belong here. Is what my government is telling me today. With the recent Supreme Court decision made last year that allowed same-sex marriage across the country, and many federal workers, most notably Kim Davis, refusing to give out marriage licenses to same-sex couples on the grounds of religious beliefs, many state legislatures, including our own, have come up with the idea of a religious freedom bill. In my mind, I believe these religious freedom bills are discriminatory against LGBT people. Now, I realize that not many of you may be a part of the LGBT community, but we need to realize that this is not a part, or this is not about a gay rights issue, but a human rights issue. I believe that this ties in with the cultural competency pillar of NSU's three public affairs pillar, so that students can understand to learn everyone's social differences and cultural backgrounds to become better people throughout life, their lives and the workforce. Now, I don't have any kind of a fancy degree, nor am I an activist by any means, but I am gay myself, and I have witnessed these discriminations firsthand, whether it was being bullied all throughout high school, not being able to join certain clubs or organizations, or even being allowed to be myself. As you listen to my speech today, I want to share with you my mother's story of what it was like to grow up gay. I want to show you what some of these religious freedom bills propose. And finally, I want to show you a country in the world that can prove as a champion of LGBT rights, not just for America, but for the world. Let's start off by talking about the history of the LGBT rights movement. During the Holocaust, many homosexuals were thrown into concentration camps and labeled by a pink triangle. Police raids were frequent on gay bars in the 1960s, and the American Psychological Association classified homosexuality as a mental disorder. I got the chance to interview Lila Robbins, bailiff at the Callaway County Courthouse, police officer for over 25 years, served in the Army from 1974 to 1980, and most importantly, she's my mother. I asked her what the gay scene was like in the 60s and 70s. She said it was full of dark alleys, dark corners. Anytime someone would walk into a gay bar, people would become very hushed. They'd look you up and down, make sure you weren't there to cause any trouble. I asked, she, I asked if she'd ever been discriminated against in her lifetime. She said that while serving for the Army, she ended up receiving a very high security level clearance rating. And because of this, the United States government ended up investigating her on the grounds of homosexual she was later deemed hazardous by the federal government. I asked her what her thoughts were on these religious freedom bills. She said, this is something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime with marriage. We're taking a huge step back to the past where discrimination was allowed. Now, many people consider the gay rights movement to have started on June 28, 1969, in a small little dive bar called the Stonewall Inn in the Greenwich Village of New York. According to a PBS documentary in 2013, New York State actually had the highest gay population in the 1960s, but also upheld the strictest anti-sodomy laws. These anti-sodomy laws were so strict that the NYPD created police vice squads just for the persecution of gay people. In fact, in 1966, these anti-sodomy laws were so strict that 100 gay men were arrested a week. Now, another tragic period during the LGBT history is during the 1980s of the HIV AIDS crisis. And this left such a lasting impression that according to Matthew Morrison of the Minnesota Law Review of 2015, there was a gay blood ban enacted in 1983. This ban is still in effect today and prevents all gay men from donating blood. Many people during this time acted very hatefully and coldly towards people with the disease, including the Reagan administration, who would later admit this. And it wasn't until the first major celebrity, Rock Hudson, who died of AIDS in Paris, that people tried to understand the disease and begin to talk about it a little bit more. This coming from Elizabeth McNeil, People Magazine in 2016. Now that I've showed you some of the atrocities that have happened in the 20th century, I hope you can kind of compare those to what we're seeing today with these religious freedom bills. 
And according to Austin Hewlett and Richard Perez Pena of the New York Times in 2016, the Missouri State Senate filibustered for a record breaking 39 hours. Said Democratic Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal to step up for people who have been discriminated against and disenfranchised. Of course it was worth it. With this Missouri Religious Freedom Bill, LGBT people can be expected to be denied education, housing, and even employment. Now there are ordinances within our own state that does ban discrimination against LGBT people, but because this bill would go on to become a state law, it would supplant those ordinances to become the higher power. Now I should mention that as of last week, the Missouri State House of Representatives did end up voting this bill down. In another state, Georgia, where this bill has become a very high profile case, and according to Alan Blinder of the LA Times of this year, many notable companies such as Delta, Coca-Cola, Disney, and the NFL have said that if this bill were to become on and go to, go to become a law, there would be serious economic consequences. This left such a lasting impression that the Republican governor, Nathan Deal, ended up vetoing that bill when it got to his desk. And finally, in Mississippi, where this bill will now become a law and take effect onto July 1st of this year, Jenny Jarvie of the LA Times reports, the Mississippi Religious Freedom Bill is the strictest in the nation. In accordance of denying LGBT people housing, education, employment, they can also be expected to be denied foster care services, child adoption care services. Not to mention the fact that it will also allow doctors to refuse sex reassignment procedures and psychological evaluations. So to put all of this into perspective, if you're a gay teen living in the state of Mississippi and you suffer from suicidal thoughts, depression, schizophrenia, you can be turned away from your therapist just because they don't agree with your lifestyle. Now that I've shared with you some of what some of these religious freedom bills are proposing, I want to show you a country in the world, the Netherlands, that proves as a champion of LGBT rights across the world. In fact, in 2001, the Netherlands were the first country in the world that allowed same-sex marriage. And according to the social acceptance of LGBTs in 2016, the Dutch government actually donates federal money to gay straight alliances within sport-based communities and even older generations to provide for a better lifestyle for their LGBT citizens. Now that you've listened to me today, I hope you can join me. I hope you can see that someone, someone like you, like you, like all of us, can put an end to the hate. We can put an end to the police raids. We can put an end to all the other 14-year-old boys who are called names. Let us finally begin to live in an age where boys can like boys and girls can like girls without being kicked out of a restaurant. I urge all of you today, call or write your representatives for your senators and tell them why these religious freedom bills are discriminatory against LGBT people. And let us finally begin to live in an age where no one has to live in fear.